was able to get the bridge to the height I want. It's just a little closer than a quarter inch off the strings by creating a little piece of wood underneath it for it to sit on, which I've blackened. I did that with a marker, actually, but you hardly see the thing, so I don't think it warranted spray paint. And I hit this guy with a file and was able to get it to seat nicely. I noticed that my open cords weren't tuning right, and again, that's because the nut, I think, was too high on the one side. So I just had to grind a bit of wood out of that gap to make it sit down square and smooth and flush and all that. So, uh, if you're thinking to yourself, boy, these project guitars look like a lot of work. Yeah, they are. If you only have 200 bucks and you want a nice guitar, that's the wrong way to do it. Buy a used guitar. If you really like doing a lot of woodworking and horsing around a lot, then buy a project guitar because, man, this is a lot of work. Uh, it'll be worth it because this is kind of fun and it's a project guitar, but if I just wanted a nice guitar, I would have bought a used guitar. That really would have been a way to save some money and get some quality because these are, these are not quality parts. This is, you know, this is cheap, but it's, uh, it's all in good fun, I guess. As you can see, I'm ready to do my grinding. I decided to do this as bodywork instead of doing um, taking the bridge apart because part of the point of this was what do you get for 200 bucks and if I start swapping out parts, uh, it's cheating. So part of the reason is if I grind this out, then, was that too dark? You can see how much bare wood there is from all the routing I've had to do to get the bridge to fit. Uh, I can hit this with spray paint again and then just make it all nice and red inside, which would look better. Now, to do the routing, I don't want to route the entire cavity. I would rather make like a ramp just to here. So I want to bring this down about an eighth of an inch and bring it back about an inch. So we're talking about taking a strip of wood out this wide. And the best way to do that without, you know, doing it with a file and making it all rough is to use the router but I have to make a rig, like a, like a ramp. So, on my handy dandy workbench, well, table saw anyway, this is a proper table saw, it's probably 50 years old. Um, I've created this nifty little contraption. So this is a chunk of two by four and two little strips of wood. It's hard to find wood that thin that doesn't, isn't or wasn't twisted somehow, but I did have a massive long scrap. And here it is. This little piece is cut off um, 2 by 4 at an angle of 6 degrees, which I'm able to set this nifty device. And uh, this way I can sit the router on top of the ramp, and I think this is sufficiently strong to support the router's weight without bending. And I'll have to set a fence behind it, right here, to, to secure it. So I'll secure something to the guitar body and then figure out how straight of a line I can cut because as the router bit sort of shallows out of the wood body, if it isn't perfectly square, I'll get a line that isn't square to this line. I'll get a line that kind of cuts at an angle like that. So then I have to adjust the ramp, take a little more wood off. So I can do that a couple times. and. Um, I should be able to, without taking out too much wood, make a nice perfectly straight opening, which is what we're after. Um, I'm not going to... I'm not going to take this ground wire off, like unsolder it and take it out, but if I just push it out of the way, it won't be in the way of my rig jig, and it won't get caught up in the drill bit. Of course, it won't get caught up for a split second before it's gone. So there we go. After a bit of routing, a bit more painting, I am otherwise ready to rock. Here's the ramp jig in place. I've secured my fence here. And this can move around because after I made the thing, I figured out that a 2x4 was wider than the hole I needed, but I didn't leave myself enough of a hole. So this has to move anyway, which is no big shock because I can move it along the fence so I can still do what I need to do. I was just hoping to set it in one spot and not have to worry about it at all. So this will be slightly more work than I'd expected, but whatever, I'm not rebuilding my little thing here. So I'll set up the camera so you just you can see what, well you know what routing looks like, but anyway I'll just set up the camera, go one quick pass over this thing and uh, see what kind of results we get.
you can see the uh, line that I'm cutting. Whoops, got too much stuff in my hands. There we go. The line that I'm cutting is not perfectly straight. That was my test. So I need to adjust the fence until I find the right line. Then I can sort of plunge the router, cut it back a bit, plunge the router a little more, cut this line back a little further until I'm gone deep enough on this side and far enough back on this edge of the hole I'm trying to make. So um, yeah, I think this will work. Well, there's my proof of concept. The uh, line is reasonably straight. Could just be the the jig flexing under the weight of the router. But I got a good clean cut. It didn't go very deep, so it's probably not deep enough. So I'm going to plunge the router another sixteenth of an inch or so, and uh, that'll bring this line back probably to here. But uh, as long as it only goes back about that far, then it won't look bad, and it's not going to get in the way of this guy because I didn't feel like taking any of that stuff off. So, jig works. I'll just finish this up, put it back together, and I think, uh, oh, and then paint. Yeah, I suppose. Well, I'll, I'll put it together to make sure that it's not rubbing before I paint it. That'd be kind of dumb. All right, I've made my repairs, and now, I don't know if you've seen uh, a dentist do this, but they'll put a piece of surgical rubber, poke a hole, fit it around the tooth they're going to work on, and then Everything else is behind this protective barrier, so I thought I would apply that with my plastic bag trick version of the same thing. So anyway, I've opened it up on all the way through so the spray doesn't build up. The pressure can just blow through, but this is now the cavity that I've made. Uh, makes it, you can see how much deeper I made it there. It's about, whatever that is, eighth of an inch. Or... 3.30 seconds, I don't know, whatever. And then a bit of grinding on this side from before where I was making sure the bridge fit through. So I'm just gonna give this a quick coat of paint just to make it red, not a thick coat, but just enough to cover it. Put the bridge back in place and we'll be done. Oh, and I got my MXR knob in the mail today too, so woohoo. There's a job finally done. Got my uh, bridge in and floating the way it's supposed to. There's wiggle in the uh, handle, so I'm not going to do the flutter effect properly, but uh, that is all the action I was expecting. Anyway, so I was able to get a coat of paint. Oops, trim arm out of the way into this cavity so it looks nice again and where I had done my routing down there it's now nice and clean and red just the way I wanted it so good job I forgot to mention the um, guitar strap I was on the fence but whether or not I was gonna go with the uh, screw eyes or just the regular strap buttons um, so I went out and bought the uh, screw eyes or whatever they're called yeah I think that's it um, so this guitar, you'll notice, is a screw eye at that end, and here you don't see anything. And that's because, this is a bad picture, but the screw eye is actually inserted in the back of the horn. And this is this little, like, uh, dog leash clip thing um, hanging on it. I don't know if I've got another picture that shows that. This one. So there you can see the, the screw eye in the back of the horn. So... Uh, this particular replica just has what looks like strap buttons, or maybe that is a screw eye. I can't really tell in this picture. I guess it is actually, but it's on, on the tip of the horn. I don't know how authentic that is. Um, but anyway, I went out and bought screw eyes, and then I got a couple of these dog leash things. So take your guitar strap, insert it through. I got these. They're a little oversized, but I got them because they got the square. Uh, buckle things in them. So take this, push it through the sewing machine to make that permanent. Uh, I have to set my length first because, you know, feeding this thing through with this giant buckle on the end of it is then going to be a, a pain. So maybe not even possible. But this is a Fender 60th anniversary leather strap thing which I got on eBay for three bucks. So inexpensive. 
So anyway, again, sew the strap closed on the back here once I've got my length figured out. And I just have to tap the holes, uh, pretty hefty holes in fact, into the body to support these uh, screw eyes. But what's two more holes, right? So anyway, this is, um, I decided to go full bore with replica details as best as could be managed without having to actually change the uh, guitar body components. So anyway, again, once I get these things in, this will be as much as can be done a complete replica.